everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And my name is Noelle McAvoy. Happy Monday, everyone. And as you see from the two of us, there's no ASAP. And there's no headphones. And there's no headphones. We, we can't hear our own selves talking, so, um, Which yeah. may be a good thing. Which may be a good thing. Sometimes we don't need to hear yeah, ourselves talking. We really hear ourselves. But, but it's definitely very weird because mm -hmm. I'm going to be playing a whole bunch of videos for you today, along with we have our uh, sports report, Wake Up Sports, with mm -hmm. uh, Kimson and Cole. They're going to come on. They're talking about Sentinel High School going up against Flathead. Um, so yeah. Yeah, we also have got some news stories for you as well as some community events. And I have discovered that every single day is like National Day uh, or so National Day kind of something. National day. So we'll start doing National Day. So I'll tell you what the National Day is. Yep. Um, so uh, here's your weekly roads report. So of course uh, construction is really heavily going on here and of course uh, the city of Missoula is um, in full gear with their 60 million dollar project replacing bridges, replacing roads, you know with Madison, Higgins Bridge. Um, and then again, there's the uh, the 20 year project that they're working on Russell Street, which is going to go into 2042. Oh my That's gosh! That's going to be a huge. Uh, that sounds so huge project. Like a mess. It's it, 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 it's going to take a long time because they have mm -hmm. to uh, deal with a lot of uh, right of way, a lot of private properties, especially between um, Brooks and Third Street. Uh -huh. Like that whole area yeah. right there has to be altered and all that stuff. But right now, I think they're going to really concentrate on replacing that bridge. Mm -hmm. But uh, they they have plans. They, they, the architectures have shown plans. So it, it's obviously going in forward into place. But of course, here are your basic uh, street closures. Um, Orange Street uh, at uh, I-90 uh, work is planned on the, you know September 12th, which mm -hmm. has been, you know, you can expect delays to be happening. And you drive from there all the time. I do, yes. So uh, where they're working on is right at the freeway exit. So um, the right by the gas station and that intersection, they haven't really done a major construction yet there. It looks like they're just widening and getting the freeway exits and ramps and entrances all situated and yep. worked out. And then Brook Street, the intersection of old Highway 93 to Pizza, because Pizza Hut's a landmark, yeah. Um, you know, work on a sewer main installation project, and of course, uh, it's also a part of the um, the trail, the mm -hmm. Tiger Grant Trail that's going from like Hamilton and beyond through Missoula. And of course, if you haven't driven through Reserve, I suggest you guys check it out because the overpass is pretty much like seventy percent complete. Wow! Did you and so it? is that de South Reserve? Yeah, it's like, I just it's, it's, to it's, the it's, north. It's, I never it's, go. It's on. Uh, let's see, South Reserve. Yeah, it's on South Reserve. Uh, just before Brooks. Oh, and okay. It, it, it's like going over and it's kind of like um, angled. Mm -hmm. It's not like perfectly straight mm -hmm. over. Kind of um, like an added diagonal. It was like diagonal. It kind of like, looks like it goes um, parallel to uh, Brook Street. And then so the, it is the plan with that that they lift up the top of it when big trucks go underneath, right? Yeah, the whole idea is that it's removable. Oh, that's the wow. whole idea is that the whole thing is removable. So that, that, that's one of the things why it costs even more money and it's also going to be heated. Yeah. It'll be heated. Wow. For, yeah. That sounds really like legit. Yeah, That's nice. It's going to be like super nice. Sweet. Um, no, <laughs> but of course, moving on, uh, Hillview Way. Uh, they'll be completing this pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, but before the, uh, but by November they should be completing the Hillview Way. It's the basically just kind of raising up the uh, road a little bit and uh, altering it just a little bit because there's always some issues if you're going down the street. There's slippage for sure. Mm -hmm. And then of course, uh, South Fifth Street West and South Sixth Street West and adjacent streets. Uh, they're doing. Um, they started a curb and sidewalk upgrade project. Old Highway 83. There's more, like I was basically just saying. And then, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, things here in their intersection, East Pine and Patty Street intersections. Uh, they finally completed the uh, the curbs on um, Spruce and Higgins, yes, right next did. to where MCAT mm -hmm. is. And you don't have to walk around all these uh, areas and sites and stuff because they basically replaced all the uh, the boxes, the yep. uh, traffic signal boxes, updated all the lights mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, so are there new signal boxes that people are gonna ha now have to paint, yep. repaint? There's a whole like blank uh, silver, nice wow. uh, new, uh, especially the one that's on Spruce and Orange Street. That's completely new. I wonder what they did with the old ones that have. From what I heard, they. Um, moved it to a smaller town. Oh, cool. I think it was like... Uh, with the art on it still? Mm -hmm. Oh, neat. I think that's where they worked with the MDT and all that stuff. So um, if if you guys had a good weekend, it, it was surprisingly nice. It was like super nice on Sunday, you know, mm -hmm. nice to get out and active and all in, in and about or whatever. Uh, but of course, today is going to be a nice one of those days as well. You know, um, today you can expect a high of 60 degrees outside. It currently is 37 outside. And then tonight you have a low of 43 degrees with a 20% chance of rain. Tuesday you can expect those rains to really start kicking in gear and all that stuff. And it's definitely a day I'm happy about 
having the day off. On today. Tuesday? Today. Oh, yeah. Tuesday, I'm working all day because we have the, uh, the Sentinel Volleyball game oh, yes. is on Tuesday. And yep. also, it's, so it's a double dose of live streams happening this week. We have the Sentinel Volleyball game. I don't know who they're going up against. And, of course, this Friday, we have the um, Sentinel's uh, last season football mm-hmm. game, from what nice. I believe. But we'll have more about that with Kemps and Nicole later on the show. Uh, I think I've talked more than I needed to talk. And, and I do have uh, a lot of new programming happening tonight, which include um, I have a separation. So I'm going to show you Monday's um, new programming on MCAT, which basically talks about Fringe Festival. It's a continuation of Fringe Fest because we have a whole bunch of that. And of course, uh, it was the uh, Libertarians Live. It was um, mm-hmm. one of the last things that uh, our very own Mike Fellows, uh, may he rest in peace, he uh, had us do for him. And um, without further ado, here is the new program you can check out tonight on MCAT. How could you? <laughs> How could I? How could you? <laughs> I know you slept with my twin brother while I was in that kiln. Never! I know you hid my child away from me for 13 years. Never! And I know you stabbed the countess so you could have her jewels all for yourself. I'll admit it. <gasps> it was me. Mamma mia! Don't you forget one thing. What's that? I've killed once to protect my pride. And I'll kill again! <gasps> ah! Terrifying passage, and I just want to read it because it illustrates a lot about this illusion of dark money. In 1942, a group of students and their professor at the University of Munich in Germany responded to the tyranny and oppression of the Nazi regime by secretly publishing and distributing a series of six leaflets. This nonviolent resistance group called itself the White Rose. By the way, they talk about the White Rose throughout this book. Its leaders included Hans and Sophie Schall, a brother and sister who were devout Christians, and philosophy professor Kurt Huber. The students typed the leaflets, ran off copies, and secretly sent them by courier to cities around Nazi Germany to be left in public places. Hey guys, um, I have another special treat for you guys. Uh, I made a stop animated video uh, just last Mm -hmm. week. And uh, I don't know, you know, you, you guys, you know, what, what, what do you guys think about it? It's nice. I, I, uh, I added voices. I did some stop animation. It's funny. It's, um, yeah, so without further ado, this is a terrible introduction for this video. <laughs> but here is uh, my stop animation video right now. Hey, come on in. I'm so glad we finally have a chance to do this. Wait a minute. Who's gonna close the door? (sighs) Oh, don't worry. I'll close the door. Yep, just closing it right now. See? All better now. Hooray! That was kind of scary for a second there. Well, I got something very special cooked up for tonight's dinner. I cannot wait for dinner. Hashtag exciting. <clears throat> What's that? Um, it's uh, red bricks. My uh, my specialty. What's wrong? I am on the red free diet. I cannot have anything red. Ah, uh, uh, what's wrong with you? <gasps> well, we can always have pizza. You know, w- without the red sauce and all. You know, um, you know, with white sauce. You know. O M G. That's a great idea. Great. I will go call them right now. Yo, dude, welcome to Head Coffee. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have got the wrong number. Do you guys serve pizza? Yeah, we do. What can we do for you, Nick? Yes, yeah, so we would like to order a uh, one large pizza, no red of any kind on there. Oh, yeah, you get one of those. No problem. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Nowhere was I. Hey, dude, what's up? <sighs> I wonder what his problem is. <clears throat> okay, the pizza will be here any minute now. Huh, that was fast. Wow, you sure got here fast. Hey, I got your pizza here. Oh my god, Chuck, is that you? Oh, you know this gentleman? Oh yeah, we go way back. Here, hold this for a second. <laughs> How have you been? <laughs> you know, just hanging out with uh, my friend here, you know. Friend? Uh, how do you know this guy? <laughs> I haven't seen Chuck in forever. Well, would you mind? W- what? Man, it'd be really cool if you know you like, you know, let us...
All right, Poor so, guy. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that looks like the worst date ever. I, I never like to have happy endings in my videos too I much. Know, it's always just like, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's it's yes. grumpy. It's okay. But of course, it's a uh, it's a continuation anthology that I've decided to start creating. So once a week, I'm going to be offering you guys a new installment of these videos. But of course, they're all interlaced and they're tied together. So it's mm -hmm. going to be like a it's like it's super weird. It's, yeah. It's it's going to be super stupid, but it's also like going to be really super uh, super awesome. Um, but you know, like the like the idea is like the major characters in one video will be mining characters in other videos, mm -hmm. and they're kind of intertwined together. And mm -hmm. I have this whole like plan and idea of uh, like just other things going on as well. And of course, I just did one just like last Saturday yep. with our stop animation, uh -huh. and that like had nothing uh, like no comedy, nothing into it. It's like all super serious. It's all drama. So these it's, are like, be drama. this is like Lego. It's like it's like a Lego like soap opera, pretty much. It's gonna be so. Well, ridiculous. what are you gonna name this stuff, Scott? Um, um, the uh, Scott Ramp Lego Anthology. <laughs> it's going to be super pompous and arrogant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it should be. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we uh, have some events coming up for you today. Do. So yes. uh, I'm going to hand over the reins, and I'm going to give it to Noelle. Oh, thanks, Scott. Hey, you guys. Not only do we have events, we've got some trending news stories that I wanted to talk about. So as you, I'm sure that as you guys have heard that the United States, as well as a lot of different countries, have started the to uh, take back Mosul. I think it's on the edge. It's in Iraq. So they are taking back um, Mosul from ISIS fighters. And what it has said, the latest update, is that hundreds of ISIS fighters are actually fleeing Mosul in Iraq and crossing into a neighboring Syria as coalition forces close in on the city. Um, and so the latest developments are 78 towns are liberated, 772 ISIS fighters are killed in the first week of battle, um, and, but shelling resumes in the town of Bashika on the outskirts of Mosul. And then Turkey says it has provided troops and weaponry to assist the Peshmerga, which is the military forces in the region of Iraqi Kurdistan. Um, and then, but, however, ISIS did execute 40 people celebrating the liberation of their villages by Iraqi forces. Um, and then they also, I don't, I don't know if it was before or after that, but they said they uh, rounded up and also shot 284 dead uh, men and boys. So we're having a lot of advances and we're also like, you know, winning. And I guess not, I'm gonna say, not gonna say like winning, but we're having a lot of advances. Um, and then, but we're also losing people too and they're also killing people. But we have an interactive map and this is where I get this information from CNN. So if you guys take a look over here, you can see the total ISIS fighters are 5,000 and total forces fighting ISIS is 108,500. Wow. So if you see here, we have 500 US troops Paramilitaries are 14,000, Peshmerga fighters are 40,000, and Iraqi security forces are 54,000. So you guys can check all that out on CNN. My next news is that, so the World Series is coming up, and the Chicago Cubs are going to play in the World Series against the Cleveland Indians. Um, the last time the Chicago Cubs won a World Series was in 1908 over 100 years ago, and the last time they were in a World Series was 1945, but they lost. So they've been in seven, they've been in eight World Series, have lost seven out of eight of them. Um, and then the Cleveland Indians have not won a World Series since 1948. So this is kind of history in the making, the Chicago Cubs, which is oft, often joked about being a terrible team. Um, and then the Cleveland Indians are going to be playing against each other in World Series. So that'll be next week sometime, I do believe. Yeah, and um, a lot of that contributes to the GOAT and, you know, the, the old... Uh, um you know, it's like there's a lot of um, what's that superstition behind like a, the whole goat story. And if you what's guys don't the know, goat story? the story is a guy tried to bring a goat into a game, and a guy okay. and he's like, "No, you're not gonna do that." And apparently, um, he uh, he said he's like, "Oh, we're cursed forever, bad luck, blah blah blah," and. Then and so did. he tried to bring a goat into the, the Chicago Cubs. The hang out. They just want to watch the to game. To the together. Chicago Cubs game, mm -hmm. in or uh, many years ago, yeah. and they cursed him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should let people bring their goats. <laughs> I'm sure there. I'm sure there'd be some um, person just wanting to mm -hmm. like to the World Series takes a goat there, and then the Cubs are like, we have to let them in. Oh, we have to. Yeah, uh, superstition's like insane. Well, it's funny because also, yeah, surrounding baseball, there's a lot of superstition in baseball, especially with like the Red Sox and the Yankees, and yeah, a lot of superstition around baseball. But it's really neat that these guys have got a good team this year and are actually going. That's very exciting. So way to go, Chicago Cubs. Yeah, like, there's some players that don't change socks. They have winning socks, and there's like, if I wash my socks, we'll lose. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. so... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's around sports a lot. Mm -hmm. It's funny. 
Yeah. Okay, I've got one more story for you guys, and this one is closer to home. So, uh, two years ago, the Montana Air National Guard began the process of changing its mission from a fighter wing to an airlift wing. So they have this sweet plane, and so they changed it from a fighter plane to an airlift plane. And so it's now um, the conversion is done, and everything is situated and finished, and they're going to be sending their C-130s on their first large-scale deployment on Monday, so today. Um, and so they are going to be going to Southwest Asia to participate in Operation Inherit Resolve, which is another division being used to defeat ISIS. Okay. And so it says that it primarily performs a tactile up portion of the airlift mission, and so it's capable of operating from rough dirt strips and is a prime transport for airdropping troops and equipment into hostile areas. So, I'll tell you guys what it holds. It's pretty cool, this is impressive, this thing is huge. And so it has a loading ramp and door. It can accommodate a wide variety of oversized cargo, including everything from utility helicopters and six-wheeled armored vehicles to cargo and military personnel. Um, it can also airdrop loads up to 42,000 pounds and is used for its high flotation landing gear to land and deliver cargo on rough dirt strips. So that's pretty sweet. So they converted this plane from a fighter wing to an airlift wing and so they can drop off supplies and hmm. troops and all this other stuff. But if it can hold utility helicopters and six-wheeled armored vehicles, that's got to be massive. Yeah, so those guys are going over there. Men and women are going over there with this new plane, so good luck to them. And yeah, they're gonna be part of the several troop, American troops that are over there now. Cool. So I found all of my stories, I found them on, the first two I found on CNN, and then my last one I found on KPAX, which is, no, yeah, KPAX, no, maybe it was KRTV. One of the sites, one of the news stations in Great Falls, it's either KPAX or KRTV. Yep. What's the one, Scott, what's the one Josh works for? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. So I don't know, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your life. Yeah. <laughs> it's Great Falls news. It's Great Falls. So, so yeah. what are the The same news station that said a zombie apocalypse and stuff, you know. Pretty much, Totally. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so if you want to find out more information about us, you can log on to our um, website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter page. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us or watch us online live, just go to MCAT.org. Yep. And of course, it's time for uh, events. So I, yes, I've got other things other than events. So you guys, today, every day is National Day something. So if you take a look at nationaldaycalendar.com, this is where I got my information from, today is National Food Day, National Bologna Day, and United Nations Day. So with National Food Day comes... Let's see, so National Food Day, they want you to be eating healthier. So on National Food Day, they want you to eat things that aren't processed and aren't packaged and don't come in plastic wrap. So that's how you celebrate that. National Bologna Day, how do you observe, observe that? Is try something new and enjoy some bologna recipes that they have on their website. So you can find that out on nationaldaycalendar.com. And the United Nations Day, so it's observed annually. This is the anniversary of the founding of the United Nations in 1945. So how do you observe that? They said that you can use a hashtag, but I'm sure that you can just like celebrate it in your own way, however you want to observe it. Um, yeah, and so National Bologna Day, United Nations Day, and National Food Day is today. So you guys go out there and celebrate yep. that. And the hashtag for uh, United Nations Day is uh, hashtag celebrate every day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So now I do have some events. Well, now we're gonna go into that. Uh, so we're gonna be starting at noon over for at the Learning Center at Red Willow. We've got some yoga for wellness that's gonna be from noon to one. It's twelve dollars to drop in, or you can pay forty dollars for four weeks. The, the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center at one o'clock. They've got a file management boot camp, and um, that's from one to four. It's forty nine dollars, and so it's going to be helping you get documents and observe documents and figure out where you kept them and what's in them. We've got a bridge group at the Senior Center at one o'clock. This is the beginners brush up group. And then Duplicate Bridge is at the Garden City Bridge Club. That's also at 1 o'clock. That's over in Stockyard Road, just off of Reserve Street. At the Missoula Public Library, we've got Computer Electronics in our maker space. It starts at 3 o'clock. You can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. And then at the Learning Center at Red Willow, they've got Tai Chi for Veterans. It starts at 3 o'clock. So 3 to 4, it's an ongoing class. It's free for veterans, their family members, and caregivers. It's going to be located on 910 Brook Street. 
Wordplay is at the base of the Warehouse Mall at 4 o'clock. It's Word Games Pro, Attic Exploration, Free Writing, and Expansion Rot Through Sharing. Now the Top Hat Lounge is Raising the Dead. We've got our live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead. Um, this is live music, well, you know, live recorded shows from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s from the Grateful Dead. They have trivia, they have a happy hour. Yeah, everything you can want. At Imagination Brewing Company, there's an open mic night at 6. And then at also Imagination Brewing Company, they have an equal friendly DIY cleaning. So it's a hands-on step-by-step series that teaches how to prepare your own environmentally friendly body and household products. So if you guys want to do that or um, want to sign up for that, you're going to have to give them a call. 926-1251 is their telephone number. And then at the Mozilla Public Library, there's an intro to email class that starts at 6 o'clock until 7 in the computer classroom. To sign up for that, you can call 721-2665. And then we have a meditation class on the corner of a McLeod and Higgins. It starts at 6 o'clock. Um, it's Buddhism and it's guided meditation and group discussion. And then at the Roxy at 7 is a movie. It's called Made in Venice, Made in Venus um, Skateboarding Documentary Screening. So it starts at 7, and it's going to be, uh, it captures the first-hand stories and recollections of 40-plus years of skateboarding in Venice, and that started with the Z-Boys, continu continued with the legendary street skaters. Um, and then my last event for Monday is a jazz d dance class uh, for adults at the Downtown Dance Collective, and that starts at 7.30. And so since ASAP is not here, um, I guess I'm just going to go right into Tuesday, after Tuesday events. So... Uh, first up, our national days for Tuesday is National Greasy Food Day, so I guess you can celebrate that just by eating bad food. And then Sourist Day, this day is a day for Scott, if we all take a look. What was that? It's Sourist Day, so Sourist Day is where you can be grumpy and sour. Oh, okay. That's a really I don't need Scott. I don't need a day to be sour and grumpy. <laughs> and then, it's also Chucky the Notorious Killer Doll Day. So maybe you can celebrate that too. I love Chucky. <laughs> but not like, you know, Brad and Chucky Chucky, but like, yeah. you know, Child's Play Chucky. Child's that was Play good. Chucky. The other... When he was like still a bachelor. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I, You've never watched That's a terrible joke. <laughs> what? And then he had got married in the second movie. And then he had a kid. And he had a kid. Yeah. yeah. He had a family. So he kind of dulled it down. But when he was still a bachelor, he was crazy. Yeah, it was <laughs> pretty crazy. All right, uh, we're moving on now. Okay, so uh, events for Tuesday. We've got over at Mask Studio, they're going to be doing an aerial fitness class. So will be doing silks, trapeze, and lira that starts at 10 a.m. And then at the Missoula Public Library, they have open hours in their makerspace that also starts at 10. That's from 10 to 6. You learn how to use, or use their equipment or work on a project of your choice. Then they have the rice table at the Children's Museum of Missoula that starts at 11. And then over in the Alps boardroom, which is located in the Florence building, they've got their Shooting the Bulls Toastmasters class. This is a lively Toastmasters club where you can improve your public speaking, improve your leadership skills, and grow your vocabulary. Mule Tastic Tuesdays is at the Montana Distillery at noon. They give a dollar back to a nonprofit of the local area. And then over at Taste Buds Kitchen, they've got a veggie pot pies cooking workshop for ages 4 to 8. That starts at 4 o'clock. It's $20 per chef. Over at Draftworks, they've got Cheers for Charity starting at 5. So 50 cents from each beer sold goes back to the Zootown Arts Community Center. And the Zach has been around Missoula for a really long time. And they do lots of different art projects for children, for adults. And they really are about engaging the community. And they're a nonprofit as well. So the money goes back to them. Drink some beer for local charities. And then we have Fall from the Parks. It starts at 5 o'clock. That's going to be in Pine View Park this week. And then also over at the Zach, they've got their Collaborative Prayer Raid Prop Building. So tomorrow will be the last day of this. And what they're doing is they're putting together a prop and a float for the Day of the Dead Parade, which will be at the end of October. Very, I believe it's like November 1st or 2nd. So that's free from 6 to 8. You guys can show up to that. And then at the Rocky Mountain School of Photography, we've got a Beyond the Photography Basics class. It starts at 6 o'clock. You'll need a digital SLR camera for this class as a way to edit and view the images. Um, but if you guys want to sign up for that, you have to call 543-0171. Um, it'll include lectures, demonstrations, and assignments. And it's going to be more than one class. It'll be an ongoing thing. So once again, you guys can call 543 Zero one seven one. At the Top Hat Lounge, they've got their picking circle. It starts at six. This is for bluegrass-oriented musicians to go out there and jam out. 
And then at Imagination Brewing Company is traditional Irish music that's also going to be at 6 o'clock. So you can join or you can just grab a beer and listen. The Good Food Store has got hands-on pizza class that starts at 6.30. It's $35. So they'll teach you basic pizza no dough and kneading and tossing. Uh, they'll make Greg's homemade red sauce, Biga's famous maple chipotle sauce, and then you'll make Mama Reagan's turkey ricotta meatballs and Greg's dessert pizza. That sounds awesome. And then there's an African dance class at the Senior Center at 7 o'clock. It's $10 per class, $35 for four classes. Um, and it's an ongoing class. You can just drop in any time. And then over at River, River Valley Church, uh, the Sweet Adelines are going to be starting their holiday concert soon and rehearsing for that. So they're inviting some women to come along. Then if you're in the choir, choir and like to sing, you can join them. So they'll be meeting at the River Valley Church. It's located on 308 West Pine Street. And so they'll meet, they'll meet there at 7. It'll be for until 8.15. It'll start tomorrow through November. And then and then you'll join the chorus at all the holiday performances. So this is like rehearsal and a meet and greet, pretty much. And then I've got two more events for Tuesday. We have our National Theater Live, Frankenstein, will be at the Roxy Theater at 7. And then the Missoula Music Showcase will be at the Bad Lunar at 9. So if you're a musician, you can go there and showcase your things. So as always, you guys, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Independent or the Missoulian for more events. I get my events up at MissoulaEvents.net. Yep. And Music Showcase is a, fan, uh, is a fancy way of saying open mic. Pretty much. So yeah, that, so you can totally check that out. Open mic's always great to uh, hone your skills and uh, get out there in public. You know, it's not necessarily about music. Sometimes you can do uh, some stand-up com mm -hmm. um, comedy as well. Yep. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can um, check all those stuff on MissoulaEvents.net. And I'm excited because uh, we have uh, two people waiting in, in the wings for us. So uh, let's have an art clip, and this is uh, an art clip uh, featuring uh, Valkyras, and this is uh, going to end in December, so you still have plenty of time to check this out, and this is called On Paper. <laughs> Spartan Live football update here on MCAT. Now, the Sentinel Spartans were off this past weekend uh, with a 14 0 forfeit win over Hellgate. Hellgate not playing varsity football this year, and we wish them the best in getting their manpower, their, their numbers back up so they can be back to that next year. Um, but now, 5 and 4, the Spartans have clinched a playoff spot, which was a huge goal going into the season. Uh, the 2013 season was the last time that they made the playoffs. So uh, a good step for Dane Oliver's program, Cole. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's the second time in, in four years that they're going to make the playoffs. And it's huge, you know, for them to to get to this point. You know, it's going to be hopefully six wins after next Friday. So um, exciting to see that this team is making the jumps necessary to be there. Uh, they had a bye week this week, obviously, with the forfeit from Hellgate. So... They went out and uh, did some bowling. Uh, the seniors coached the JV team. They got healthy. Uh, Spencer Shock was nursing an ankle injury. Mitchell Roberts was nursing an ankle injury. So that was the most important part for Sentinel. Hey, just take the week off, have some fun, get healthy, pre prepare for this game against Flathead, 
and uh, hopefully improve a playoff seating if they were able to pull out the win. And speaking of playoff seating, Class AA standings after Friday night. Billing Sr. is now 9-0. and They'll go to 10-0 and after getting a Missoula Hellgate forfeit win this coming Friday. Uh, this past Friday, a 50-12 to win over Crosstown rival Billing Skyview to clinch that number one seed. Kalispell Glacier is now 8-1 and after a 43-7 to Crosstown win over Kalispell Flathead, who drops to 3-6 and as they head to Missoula to take on the Spartans. Billings West is now 8-1, 21-7 win over Great Falls, who still has just one win to their name, even though a lot of their games have been close. It's been a frustrating year for the Bison. Bozeman 7-2 after a 42-7 win at CMR. CMR drops to 3-6. And, and Helena is 6-3 after a 49-14 win at Butte. And they will host Billings West this coming Friday in a, a game with uh, playoff implications for both teams. Missoula Big Sky is now 5-4 and four after losing to Helena Capital, who is maybe the hottest team in AA right now at 5-4 and four after a 1-4 and four start. And uh, Helena Capital, 34-14 win over Big Sky. We talked about Sentinel having a 14-0 Missoula Hellgate forfeit win. Missoula Big Sky will be at Kalispell Glacier on Friday night, and so a tough game there. Helena Capital will be at Butte. Great Falls CMR will have a, their crosstown rivalry game with Great Falls High. Um, Butte is now 2-7. and seven. Billing Skyview is now 1-8, and eight, just to finish out the standings. Um, and we move on now. Uh, the eight playoff teams are pretty much set. you got Billing Senior, Kalispell Glacier, Billings West, Bozeman, Helena, Missoula Big Sky, Missoula Sentinel, and Helena Capital. Not necessarily in that order. Here's a couple of scenarios for Sentinel specifically. If they win and then Helena and Big Sky lose, it's most likely the number five seed. That's the best case scenario for the Spartans. If Sentinel wins and then either Helena or Big Sky loses, it's probably a six seed. Uh, Sentinel win and then a Helena win and a Big Sky win would mean they stay right where they are right now as it stands uh, with a seven seed. Uh, the only way they could drop down is probably if they lose and Capital wins, which would drop them down just to an eight seed. Again, they cannot drop out of the playoffs, which is a good thing but they also hope to, uh, like they were saying, even at the beginning of the year, finish uh, strong with a win against Flathead on Friday night on Spartan Live. Yeah, they win that game, and, you know, Hell in the High loses, and then Big Sky loses. Yeah, you're looking at a potential five seed there. And anytime you can improve your seeding, I mean, you want to be able to take advantage of that opportunity. A loss would be devastating if they were to lose Friday night and fall down to eight. Then they'd have to go on the road and play Billing Senior. They're not going to want to do that. <laughs> um, they want to hopefully improve their seeding, maybe play, face a team like Bozeman High, um, a team that they haven't played um, this season, and see if they can pull out a win there. Um, that seems like the most likely scenario to me, um, just with Big Sky and Helena having a couple difficult games um, this Friday night. Big Sky's playing Glacier, and then Helena High's playing Billings West. So it'll be a tall order for those teams to win. But we'll see how it pans out. Sentinel has done a terrific job this year. Um, just seeing where they were like even 10, 15 years ago, you know, and really seeing just the, the wins they've been able to accumulate, you know, over the past four or five years has been, it's been good to see, you know, it's been good to see the program taking some strides, taking some steps forward, winning some games and, and making a postseason appearance. Look out for Capital High, though. Man, I mean, their defense is just tenacious. You know, the first half of the season, they only won one game. But they've been in every single game they've played, and it's, uh, it's been impressive. They only lost to Billings West by seven. They're, they could go six and four now, and I really feel like if anyone is going to take on Billings Senior, it could be them. I mean, their defense is stout. They stopped Missoula Big Sky last week um, like four times in the red zone on fourth down uh, to really preserve that win. So you've got to give them a lot of credit and where they're looking to go. And um, they're ready to play, and they can definitely pot they can potentially you know upset a couple teams along the way. Who knows? But Sentinel, I feel like they're in the same boat. Get some momentum, you know. Get healthy, um, you know. Make your way through the playoffs. I mean, this team can put up some offensive numbers. Um, who knows where they're going to be next week? Again, there's still one week left in the season. You can never look too far ahead. Just look at what you have right in front of you, and what they have right in front of them is Kalispell Glacier 
on senior night, they got to take care of business. And um, excuse me, Kalispell Flathead, they got to take care of business in that game and hopefully pull out the W. Sentinel hoping to have a night of celebration on Friday night, a seven o'clock kickoff as they host Flathead. They hope to win that one to move to six and four. They've already got the playoff spot clinched. Future Spartans night, senior night, will be there. We hope you are as well. Spartan Life Football on MCAT. I'm Kepson Cross. I'm Cole Johnson. And we thank you for watching. Wake up, Missoula. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. Hey, we're back, and of course, um, um, Montana is such a great place for sure. Um, I always think to myself, is like, what teams should you always go for if you're Montana, especially in in, in the NFL? It's like Montana doesn't have a professional NFL team, mm -hmm. but in a lot of ways, it's good because it gives us a choice. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be designated to a certain team because I remember that sometimes if you're live in a state, you have to go for the NFL team. Like if you're from Washington, it's like, oh, you must be a Seahawks fan. It's One like, thing that I've noticed is that there are a lot of Packers fans out here. A lot of people really like the Green Bay Packers out here, which I guess I don't really, I guess I understand the aspect that Green Bay is like a small, considered like a small town yeah. with an NFL team. So I guess Montanans can like relate to that, Spread. but I never get why so many Packers fans are out here. Well, uh, a lot of it has to do with because, you know, Missoula is the land of the nonprofits. And Green Bay is not owned by a private owner. It's mm -hmm. owned by the town. Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of people, yeah, resonate with that and like that. I get that. I get that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think they were one of the last teams to hold off on um, getting turf for their field too. Mm. They use real grass. The, yeah. Let go. Okay. I anyway, see that. it's all natural, man. Are they a good team though? Uh, they, they're not in the. Uh, I haven't heard too much about them yeah. one way or the other, and I, I don't really keep track of them because I am myself not a Green Bay fan, nor am I a lot of different. I don't I'm know. Not a football fan. I'm, I'm not I was a, I was a, I was I, I was a Seahawk fan for a little bit only because my friends were Seahawk fans. You know, I was like, I don't want to. You know, okay. I was like, I told him, I was like, I'll, I'll bandwagon it, and then like when you guys are gone, I'm not gonna be a Seahawk fan anymore. Yeah, I, yeah. I told him straight up. I was just like, I'm not gonna be like. If you're They're like that. okay. But of course, uh, moving on. Uh, Fort Missouri Regional Park is in full swing, and I have a little short clip. And of course, uh, MCATS has been showing it on um, um, our channel, all over the place. And you know, I kind of have the full clip, and I got some behind the scenes look at some of the new fields because they have turf on one of their activities field. Oh, cool. It's, okay. it's so cool and it's so interesting, but of course this one is mostly about the unveiling. And uh, when we come back, uh, we'll start wrapping up the show, but um, here is a nice little clip from the, uh, um, I guess he's the director of the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula, and he's the last one to speak of the unveiling. Okay, greetings everyone. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to uh, just echo what my colleagues have said and thanking you for all, all for coming out here today in celebration of this project and for the unveiling of our Iron Mike statue. I especially appreciate the comments from Stan uh, in that I feel that his comments represent something that really gets to the heart of what we've tried to do here with Fort Missoula Regional Park. It's something we've worked on ever since prior to even breaking ground. During the planning process, the rich history of Fort Missoula and the historic district and the CCC era have shaped many of the features of this park, from the pavilion and shelters to the entryway we stand in front of today. The careful consideration of history that was part of this process also includes interpretive signs that will be installed in the coming months. From the be very beginning, those responsible for planning the park have worked to make it not just a city-county partnership but also a partnership with the historical agencies that call Fort Missoula home. As a representative of one of those historical agencies, I truly appreciate the opportunity to be involved in the process. When the park is complete, it will not only be a regional attraction for sports, it will also become the gateway to the Fort Missoula Historical District. It will transform the area, bolstering the economic developments for Missoula, provide a noticeable impact on the partner's admissions, and also provide much needed amenities like parking and increased security for the entire Fort Missoula complex. In the coming years, I look forward to growing as a museum with the traffic created by the park. I also look forward to the many opportunities that the park will create for partnership and events and programs. 
Finally, I'm grateful to Missoula City and County, and especially our voters, who saw potential in an undeveloped field scarred by gravel pits. The park that will open soon is something Missoula can be proud of, and something that truly honors the history of Fort Missoula Historic District and its partners. Thank you. I think we found our next speech right there. <laughs> thank you, Matt. That was great. Um, I want to thank you all for your remarks and for being here today. You know, something Matt said rings true to me, and that is the, the partnerships that are in this community and the way people work together to make things happen, to make our community a better place to live. And that starts with the voters. So I also want to thank the voters of Missoula County who passed the bond that's making all of this possible. And then finally, I'd like to thank the folks at Starbucks who are providing us with coffee to keep us warm and ESP Sound for the sound today. With that said, um, I'd like to remind you that Donna, Lisa, and Neil will be available to answer any of your questions afterwards. And Stan and Tate, I believe, will be up here to also answer any questions you might have. It reminded me, I also need to thank Jackson Contractor Group, and that's true. Those guys standing back there are doing a great job. Thanks, Tate. One, two, three. Seized from 1933 to 1942. Remember what happened December 7th, 1941. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got attacked, and because three million men had gone through the seas from 33 until 42, we had, and the army was in charge of them. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the uh, the whole monument and everything. So that's that was the big unveiling of the monument. Cool. People will see that every time they go through the entrance way. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of great stuff. Um, I really. Uh, and so, I, when are they predicted to be done with all this construction? This is phase one. Phase one. Phase okay. one is the area basically between um, the tail end of Big Sky High School on South Street. Oh. Um, and there's a long field. There's uh -huh. a large area that people. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've it seen was. That. Yeah, it was like yeah. completely blank, and now it's like there's a really nice gla grassy area, wow. and there's like natural hill right there, so it kind of goes dips down. And then there's like a long field. It's nice. like it's like endless. If it looks like sometimes. That's really cool. And, and so, how many phases are there? There's gonna be two phases. The first phase is this area with the um, the all-purpose uh, field. That's mm -hmm. a turf field. They say this is gonna be a 12-month type of field. Okay. Um, they have the pavilion. Oh. Okay. They have a couple bathrooms for sure. They're gonna have like a year-long, year year-round uh, access bathroom. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And I think they have like two new employees to be like maintenance and staff. That's really just neat. Just to kind of have like cool. maintain the area and stuff like that. Well, then now we'll be able to have a lot more sports competitions come into Missoula. Yeah. And if they demolish the market and build that Marriott, we'll have more hotels. <laughs> so bringing more tourism and more money into Missoula is very important, but also uh, maintaining our aesthetic is just as important too. So hopefully the city can balance that, but I have faith that they will. Yep. But of course, um, I didn't get a chance to show Tuesday events. So I mean Tuesday programming. So here your Tuesday programming happening tomorrow night. I kind of like this list because it has such weird places on it, um, uh, like Macau, which is part of China. Uh, relatively recently, it was part of Portugal until just before 2000. Uh, but as you uh, look at these, uh, I wouldn't call these the 10 most developed places in the world. Let's, again, let's take a few minutes to practice this. Again, if you want to play, you really like your life is perfect and you don't have any issues with anyone, great, make something up. But for those of you who don't and you want to practice, this is the time and the place to do it. So. All right, and then that's all your uh, your stuff for you guys uh, happening Monday. We had a whole bunch of stuff today. We did, yeah. Just a whole bunch of nice just show. thrown at you. You know, you had stop animation. We had our wake up sports with Kempson and Cole. Thanks to you guys for uh, stopping in and talking about Every the, Monday. the last uh, mm -hmm. of the sports. You know, like yeah. it's uh, the end of the football season mm -hmm. um, coming to a close. Um, this is the last week that Sentinel gets to play, and they're playing against Flathead. 
Um, so we'll hear about all about that from those guys on Monday, but they'll be filming it over the weekend on Friday. Yes. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So you guys can tune in to Spartan Live, which is on our MCAT website. Yep. But of course, uh, um, uh, tomorrow is uh, is an indication of a week before the elections. Yes. So all the uh, all the ads and all the stuff are have been hidden hard. All People the stuff. are going to be calling. And I finally you. found my I finally found a negative ad against Hillary. Oh really? Yeah, because um, from what I've seen is that the campaign that um, Trump has uh, had is that he hasn't really made too many attack ads against Hillary. It's mm -hmm. all been against Trump. It's all about how yep. Trump is the worst thing ever. All about Trump is just the terrible, uh -huh. horrible yep. human being that kind of thing. But you need both sides to be fair. Yeah, with so. like a lot of times television, um, like news especially, is required to have half and half between this and that. But of course, they've been mostly talking about Trump most of the time. Well, he's just made such a controversial splash, and like he is just so outspoken with his controversies and his ideas and opinions yeah. that how can you not talk about it? And then with all these women coming forward, with all these like sexual assault allegations, yeah. it's just like hot topic, you yeah. know. And one of my um, one of my friends, uh, she's gonna be she she voted for Trump. And what was and the reasoning I, for that? Uh, she says that, um, well, she says that uh, Trump uh, may ramble and has his own uh, thoughts and ideas how he's going to run the country and stuff like that, but it's all in his head. He doesn't necessarily need to share that kind of thing. So he's delusional and she's okay with it? Is that I don't know. She's saying. I don't know. That. I, I. Those are her opinions. Yeah. Yeah. So, her opinions. Yeah. Like it's going? interesting because it it's. Interesting. Um, I mean, because like, I did tell her about the whole like, uh, you know, um, oh, what about the whole Trump? You know, the woman, like all that mm -hmm. stuff he said about women and all that stuff. And I don't know. It's it, it's another issue because most people don't trust the Clintons. Yes. And yeah. um, you know, most people don't trust Trump. And I, I honestly got to say. Um, like regardless of what people think is that they're both terrible like I, I don't really care one for the other more than the other because they're both just, just terrible like I, I like in my own personal opinion that doesn't reflect charter communications city of Missoula or Missoula community access television is that I am I, I'm at the point where I just I don't want to vote for either like I do not want to vote I think for anyone. Of, I don't think anyone deserves to be president at this I point. I think there are a lot of other people that have those same thoughts and those same feelings. Like, they don't want to vote Trump because he's just so, like, crazy. Don't want him in the office. But then Hillary, you know, kind of a robot. Yeah. Um, and then any other party. So I know that there are some people that have been writing in Bernie Sanders. Yeah, so which is how, impossible because you can't write him in because he didn't actually sign to be a writing candidate. I heard that he did. I, I'm pretty sure he didn't because he, really? he, he wants to – he backed uh, Hillary on the sake of – for. Uh, for Democrats, he's mm -hmm. like saying that the Democrats have to stick together and he doesn't want to separate votes from mm -hmm. Hillary. And the reasoning behind him is because he doesn't want Trump to get the vote. Yeah, and I that's agree. why, of course, Gary Johnson is what a lot of Republicans are going to. Mm -hmm. He's their uh, Bernie in a way. Yes, yep. Like regardless of he if he knows about Topeka or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this has all been a hot mess, I can say, and that this is a very inf not I'm going to say not influential election season, yeah. but very memorable for sure. Yeah. Memorable. And, and the people were telling you, it was like, oh, you should get out and vote and get out and vote. I'm probably the only one to should tell you, is like, you know, you just because you have the right to vote doesn't mean you have to vote. You if you right. don't really like this the whole election, you can just say, forget it. I don't want to have but any part of this. you're not allowed to complain because if you didn't vote and try to put your opinion in there in one way or another, then I don't think that if you vote, you can't complain about what's happening yeah. in our country. And you have to vote for Batman. No. So either you vote and you can complain or you don't vote and you can't complain. That's how I look at it. Yeah. <laughs> so some election talk with us. <laughs> yeah, just uh, because it's, uh, it's a week away. It's it like, is. super intense, it's and very we don't want to sway anyone's votes mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yeah. But you guys can find out a lot of information at the voter registration office as well as the elections office here yeah. in Missoula. And we've been running those PSAs, Chats with Kate, all on our channel and on our show, too. So you guys will see those around. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and of course, if you guys want to, um, of course, if some of you didn't get an absentee ballot in or mailed in in, in a time, you can always go to the Missoula County uh, Courthouse to get more information because that's where they're stationed at. You can go to the voting office and talk about like maybe getting a absentee ballot beforehand, but of course, it might be too late for that, and you might have to wait to go to your uh, local uh, district uh, area where you can vote. But of mm -hmm. course, if you don't know where that is, um, look it up online. Um, you just oh. No, you, you can go to the uh, fairgrounds because that's where it is. Yeah, the fairgrounds is where you can go you, if you, you don't can, have a designated place to go to vote. But you guys can also look it up online if you guys, I think it's myvoter, myvotes.com or myvoter. But there's, Missoula an, votes com. there's an entire website where you can enter in your birth date and your social security number and your name and they tell you, you know, they'll have your address up there and they'll tell you your polling place. 
So you can do that online. Yeah. And so that's, you know, really important and that's coming up that's next week, which is really, really hard to believe. I feel like it's been like a good year and a half of all this craziness happening with the elections. And so now it's all finally coming to a head and almost about to change. So, but Scott's got this website up. So if you guys take a look over here. Yep. MissoulaCounty.us is the place where you can find all sorts of um, links and stuff for your voter information and more. But of course, you can always go to the CD of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us, or you can um, Google search any of those and they will uh, provide you the information to find any of these resources where you can find a vote. But if you don't want to um, go online and find it, you just go to the fairgrounds because that's where their voting um, station is. That's where like Missoula's central vote voting area is for anybody who wants to vote. Yep. Very but true. of course, uh, yeah, if you got, want more information about Wicca Missoula and less about voting and election topics, you can go on to wickamissoula.wixsite.com slash Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page. You can go to follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page. And to find out more information about us or to watch us online live, just go to MCAT.org. Yep, and we're, we're going to be live streaming the uh, volleyball game for Sentinel High School, um, and we're going to be live streaming the final season game of Sentinel uh, football, Spartans versus the uh, Flathead Indian Indians. Yes. Nice. And, of course, um, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ram. Yes, I guess this is the end of our show. So <laughs> for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. Thanks for tuning in with us, you guys, and we'll be back on program on Wednesday with ASAP. Mm-hmm.